friends, it's Carly. Welcome back to my kitchen. It is dinner time. Um, it's actually Father's Day today, so happy birthday to all the fathers out there, especially my husband and my personal father. Um, we are going to be cooking today again in the pressure cooker because it is a hot summer day and I do not want to heat my entire house up by using my stove, wasting all of that electricity, especially when we're trying to run the air conditioning. So this is one of those great summer dishes that goes together quickly. It uses lots of fresh produce and the added benefit of not heating your house up. Plus, since we're doing it in the pressure cooker, it's gonna be done a heck of a lot faster than if we are doing it stovetop and sitting there babysitting and stirring. Speaking of babysitting and stirring, check out what we are making tonight. We are making cheddar broccoli risotto with chicken. Now, if you know anything about risotto, it's kind of like a rice dish that's like uber silky and uber creamy, um, beautiful sauce. It's absolutely gorgeous and so delicious, but it is a very difficult dish to make. Why? Because you have to keep stirring and then adding liquid and stir and add liquid. Like you literally cannot walk away from the stove the entire time you are cooking risotto. Worth it? Absolutely. But when you don't have that kind of time or if you're just looking for like a quick, easy risotto put to put together, try this recipe. It's absolutely fabulous. So let's gather our ingredients. Um, you're going to need about three cups of chicken broth. This is the chicken broth that I make myself with my chicken scraps and my veggie scraps. Make sure to keep those things because they are still valuable and they still have flavor. Put in water, boil it off, and you have yourself broth. And I have like an endless supply of broth in my freezer because I just continuously keep adding to my bag of scraps and, you know, and my chicken. Now, speaking of chicken, um, I got a large, uh, like a family pack of chicken. Um, these are the boneless, skinless breast, uh, sorry, thigh variety. You can use chicken breasts, you can use chicken tenderloins. Um, I recommend the boneless, skinless kind unless you wanna debone your own chicken or de-skin your own chicken, which is more budget friendly, but it is more uh, labor intensive. However, here's a little cooking hack. Make sure to check how much your chicken or your meat costs because sometimes if you buy in bulk, especially when that meat or whatever goes on sale, buy it in bulk, break it down into smaller portions and put it into your freezer or if you're just going to be cooking it that week, just put it into a bag until you are ready to use it and you can use it in various recipes, which is what I'm doing with this. This was in a family pack, but I broke it down into um, my family's portion sizes, but I saved money by buying the larger packaging um, and then you know using it in several recipes. Now, if you're not planning to use those, uh, those meats all in one week, just put them into a freezer bag and put them in the freezer and they should last for quite a while. So moving on, we've got our produce. Um, I'll be using one red pepper today, some broccoli. You're gonna want about two cups of broccoli um, or, or thereabouts. You don't have to go too crazy with the broccoli. I know sometimes stores will package them and they're like, they bring them out in like a wheelbarrow, right? They're like, Here, here's your broccoli. Like you don't need that much broccoli. Um, you're gonna need a medium onion, two to three uh, cloves of garlic. If you like more garlic like me, go ahead and you know get a little more crazy with your garlic. If not, leave it out or just do one or two. Um, you're gonna need a lemon. We're only gonna be using half a lemon today, but you will need to have that on hand. You are going to need a special kind of rice. Now risotto is made with arborio rice. So you're not gonna want jasmine rice, you're not gonna want basmati rice, you're not gonna want like the, the you know stuff that you buy in the bag and boil for five minutes and you're all done. Don't do that because the quality of uh, the dish will be affected by that. So make sure that you get this arborio rice um, specifically made for risotto. 
Um, you're gonna need about a tablespoon-ish of Dijon mustard. Um, of course, you're gonna need some oil. I also have some sharp cheddar cheese in the block form because you always want to uh, grate your own cheese if you can, it's definitely better. And we're also going to need about two ounces of cream cheese. This is an eight ounce block, so it'll only be about a fourth of this. This will be added later to kind of give it that creaminess um, and that richness that we're looking for out of a risotto. So these are your ingredients. Um, I'm gonna show you really quickly how to throw this thing together and have dinner on the table in no time. Stay with me. I am back. Um, I am just starting to prep my vegetables first. So we're gonna do all of the prep and then we'll do the cooking. It's kind of how I like to do things because then you can grab things as you go, especially if it's a dish um, that has to go together really quickly, like a stir fry. Um, you don't wanna be caught trying to do the prep as you're doing the work because then things can overcook or they can start sticking or you know scorching or whatever. So before I show you um, all of this mess, right here and what I'm going to be doing with it. I want to show you the ugliest bag in the entire world and I love it. This is my scraps bag. It's my veggie scraps bag. You can see, well it's been in the freezer so it is frozen, but you can see all of my carrot peels that, you know, you peel a carrot. Um, you can see the butts of celery, there's onions, there's red onions, there's green onions, there's all kinds of different vegetables. Any scraps that you have, put them in a bag like this, they'll accumulate. Um, and then when you are, you know, when you have a nice full bag, this is just about ready for me to make more chicken broth, which is fabulous because I've only got like two or three uh, cans left in the freezer right now. So I'm just about ready to do that. Now, all I did here was break down my green, or my, um, my red pepper, uh, just took the seeds out and took the, uh, you know, the insides out. Um, I cut my onions into quarters. Um, these are my onion scraps that of course you are going to keep. So just pop that into your bag, skins and everything. Um, onion skins actually give your broth a really nice color, um, a really rich, uh, deep color. Now, um, I've started skinning my garlic. Um, those of you who know me well know that I love garlic. Love it, but I hate working with it because it's sticky and stinky. And it, I mean, you could use that stuff to, as like poster tack. I swear, like rub some garlic on the wall. That poster's never coming down, ever. So what I have is a clove of garlic. I've already done two of them. This is my garlic peeler. It looks so unassuming. It's just a little piece of rubber. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my uh, garlic clove with the skin on, put it inside. I'm gonna put it down here on my countertop and press down. You wanna be able to feel the garlic in there. And then you just roll it back and forth a couple of times and out comes a perfectly peeled clove of garlic. What's left over in there is just the skin. Rinse it out, put it into your dishwasher, you are done. So now all of my vegetables, you don't need to spend a lot of time cutting and chopping all of these things. Just give them like a rough chop because we're gonna be using the manual food processor to really break these down. So I am going to put in my red pepper first. The manual food processor is awesome. You have all of the control of how you want, oops, if I get that thing in there. Uh, you have all of the control of how you want your vegetables to be cut. I think I need to, I do here. There we go. So if you have vegetables that you want in really chunky salsa, um, you can control whether that salsa is gonna be really fine or whether that salsa is going to be um, really chunky. So with this, all I'm going to do is put this into my uh, manual food processor, pump the handle as many times as I want, and then I will be able to use, and I don't even have to take it out of this vessel. Um, I'll show you right now. Um, it's in three parts. This vessel here is where I'm just going to keep all of this stuff so I don't have to have another uh, prep bowl or something else that I'm going to need to wash later because God knows I hate doing dishes. But once you finish with uh, processing all of these things, then all you need to do is just, this is your prep bowl. Keep them in here and then scoop them into, uh, scoop them into your pan or wherever you are going. So I'm gonna show you really quickly, the head of broccoli, you really don't need to do much with it. Um, of course, if you have this little fabulous thing, that goes right into 
your, uh, your bag of scraps. And the broccoli, you don't have to do too much to. We kind of want to leave the broccoli um, more intact. So you want a bite-sized piece, not something that's gonna fill your entire face with broccoli. Um, so if you have a larger florette, you could cut this in half uh, just using a santoku knife or a utility knife just so it's a little bit more manageable. So the vegetables take two seconds to throw together. Um, I'm just gonna finish the prep up here and then we're gonna go to the chicken. So stick with me, I'll be right back. It is time to prep our chicken. Uh, again, you'll notice that I have a new cutting board um, and this cutting board is only going to contain chicken. So when I'm doing my dishes later, I can keep my chicken death away from all of my other dishes um, and away from all of my other food. And of course, you need impeccably clean hands after you are done with this to continue with your food prep. But now that all of my produce is done, um, it, now I'm just going to break the chicken down down. Again, we're just doing bite-sized pieces, um, kind of like the broccoli. It's fine. They don't all have to be exactly the same size, but you do want them to be, you know, small enough that you can get like a bite without looking like a heathen, okay? Um, and then of course you want that delicious bite that has chicken and broccoli and that pepper onion mixture and the risotto. You know, you don't want to have just gigantic chunks of meat. So I'm using my Santoku knife. I love the Santoku knife. Um, it is one of my go-to knives, this and the utility knife. Um, I recommend that if you're a beginner with cooking that you look at one of the Santoku knives or the utility knife. Um, just to get yourself started. And please, please, please get a good knife in your kitchen, even if it's just one. Just one is better than zero. And if you go to, you know, the bargain basement section of your local whatever store and you get, you know, some kind of bargain basement knife, it's going to wear out in like two shakes of a lamb's tail. And dull knives, bad knives are actually dangerous. You don't cut yourself as much when you have a sharp, good knife. It's when the knife is dull that it slips off your food, it can injure you. Um, sometimes you'll have um, knives that don't have a full tine, which means the piece of steel is the same piece of steel from the tip to the butt. And then you'll notice that the, the, the handle gets wiggly. Well, that's not good either, because what if that handle breaks and you're right in the middle of chopping something? Guess you're going to the ER tonight. Didn't think that was on your agenda, but there you are. Get yourself a decent knife. Invest in a decent knife, let's put it that way. This is not something that's a luxury. This is an absolute must in your kitchen. So that being said, all of my chicken is cut up into bite-sized pieces. So the next step, it's just this simple, is to start cooking this baby. So stick with me, I'll be right back to show you how to cook it. We are back and ready to cook. So let me introduce you to my little friend. This is the Deluxe Multi Cooker. Um, this thing is one of our newest products. It is absolutely phenomenal. It has so many different settings. There are 16 preset settings, but there's also custom settings. So you really can do so much with this. Um, this thing does breakfast, lunch, dinner, desserts, all of it. Yes, you can actually do desserts in this. We have a fantastic, fantastic recipe for lemon raspberry cheesecake in the pressure cooker. And it doesn't heat up your whole house. It uses a fraction of the amount of electricity that it would to heat your oven, especially while your air conditioning is running and all of that. This is a sous vide cooker. This is also a rice cooker. This is a pressure cooker. This is also a sterilizer and a slow cooker. If you've got a kitchen full of one use appliances, you could get rid of all of them and just replace them with this one thing. It's so versatile. I'm gonna open it up. Um, and it does have this little, I don't know why I'm so obsessed with this, but it has this little notch and it just sits right there. So the steam doesn't go all over your counter and all over your floor um, and give you more work to do, right? Now, how to clean it? It has an inner crock. Isn't it pretty? It's like really shiny. Um, this comes out right into the dishwasher. Um, there is a silicone rim around here. Pull it out, stick it in the dishwasher. You wipe down the outside with a cloth. It doesn't usually get, I mean, unless you're like going absolutely buck wild in the kitchen, this doesn't usually get, you know, too gross. 
but you'll want to wipe it down every once in a while. You don't want to be a complete crazy person. And then the lid, the same thing. You're just going to wipe this down with soapy water, um, but super easy to clean. This is just dishwasher, poof, done. So what I'm going to do now um, is I'm going to use the, the sear setting at first. So I come to the front and I turn this to sear. It would, it would be very difficult for y'all to see it because it's so tiny, but I can see it. I'm going to put this on sear um, and I am going to go with, let's see, I'm going to go with, oh, 20 minutes is fine. There we go, or 21, that's fine. And we're just going to press and hold. Now this is going to come up to temperature. And the first thing I'm going to do is put a little oil in there. Isn't this little fun thing? You, like you squeeze the sides and then you can drizzle the oil in there. Or if you have, um, if you have two of these and you do oil and vinegar for your salads, mm, so nice. Or if you do like, um, you know, if you want to do like a balsamic drizzle over something, or if you have um, you know, some kind of fun hors d'oeuvre that you want to uh, do a little bit of extra virgin olive oil over top of it, mm, like bruschetta or something. I'm getting myself all excited now. So, um, by the way, a little bit earlier I showed you my manual food processor and started doing that. Look at how beautiful this is all just diced down in here. And then I just, I took out the uh, center blade and now it's a cooker, it's a vessel that I can hold this like a prep bowl. So once this is starting to heat up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cook these down at first. Um, this is the onion, this is the garlic, and this is the red pepper um, that we uh, chopped up earlier in the manual food processor. So this is just starting to get hot right now. There are actually three settings on the sear setting. Um, there's low, there's medium, and there's high. Um, it kind of depends on, um, you know, on what you're cooking. So if you want to get a good sear on meat, um, like if you're doing a roast, but you get like in the crock pot, you know, you want to do it in a slow cooker, get a high sear on that and then move it around in the pan so that you get that beautiful crust over the entire roast in your pan. Um, and then do it in the slow cooker and then it's, uh, it's, so beautiful. Now, if you're just cooking vegetables down a little bit, you don't have to go too crazy with putting it all the way up to high. If you put it up to high and you're just cooking down your vegetables, just babysit it a little bit more. You don't want to walk away um, and then all of a sudden your vegetables are like on fire or something, okay? They're not going to catch fire, but you know what I'm talking about. So this is going to start sizzling away. Um, once this does, I'm going to cook these down for probably four or five minutes, just until the onion and the pepper is a little translucent. You'll start to smell the aroma of that garlic. Um, and then once this is done, I'm gonna pop my chicken in, throw everything else in there and start cooking it. So I'll let you go for a minute while I bring this up to temperature, and then I'll show you how to put the whole thing together. Stay with me. I'm back. And this is smelling so good right now. Um, the onions, the sweetness of the pepper, that that kind of pungent kick of the garlic. Oh my goodness, it's just, I wish I could share smells with y'all. But alas, here we are. Come on, technology, can you catch up a little bit? So I'm gonna take my chicken here. Um, again, I've got these flexible cutting mats, which are lovely because I know that my chicken is going to go where I want my chicken to go. And not all over my fresh, clean countertops, right? because you know, nobody got time for cross-contamination, especially when it comes to chicken. Do you have time for salmonella? I ain't got time for salmonella. So I'm just gonna kind of incorporate the chicken into this. Now remember, we are going to be pressure cooking this, so we don't have to have the chicken completely cooked before we start doing that process. Now, this is my rice. Um, I wish it, well, it's, it's so small, but it's, it's such a cool grain of rice. It's not a long grain. It's very short and kind of stubby. It really reminds me of, of barley is what it really looks like uh, to me. I remember having barley and like beef barley soup, those little kind of, they almost like bloom. These are so cute. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop one cup of my rice in there and just start to move that around. Did you see that one that just flew out of there? It's like, no! you will be in my belly. And then you're also going to want three cups of your chicken broth. Now, I suppose you could make this 
vegetarian if you wanted to leave out the chicken um, and if you wanted to do that use a vegetable broth instead um, obviously if you're a vegetarian you're not going to be doing chicken broth right so I'm going to move this around in here as well and then the last ingredient that I am going to put in here is my little magic ingredient of Dijon mustard. Now the Dijon mustard, oh my gosh, it's exploding. Look at it, it's so excited to get in my dish again, right? So the Dijon mustard is actually going to add kind of a mustard kick, but Dijon mustard, um, has a specific flavor and a little bit of that acidity that we are going to need. So I'm going to take one tablespoon, I'm gonna use my adjustable measuring spoon and watch it just squeeze it out. Isn't that nice? Just squeeze it like I don't even, you know, need to work too hard. So my Dijon mustard is in there. Now, I am just gonna stir this until it's incorporated, making sure that my rice is all submerged. Uh, yes, even that one that tried to escape, like, sorry buddy, this is your Alcatraz. You cannot get out of here. You are here for life. So this is looking fabulous. It smells amazing. It looks a little crazy right now because there's some raw chicken floating around in there. Ain't nobody got time for that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press the X because I am done searing it. Um, I don't need the sear setting anymore, so I can just go ahead and turn that off. Now, I am going to put the lid on backwards, mind you. Let's see if I can do it backwards. It gave me a little bit of a, I think I might have done it. Oh, it sings me a song. Y'all, can, can you hear that? Sings me a song because it loves me so much. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put this on the white rice setting. Now, I've got to figure out where that is because I'm behind it. So, the white rice setting is right here, and I am just going to um, let it go to the default setting of white rice. I am going to push and hold this to turn it on. It gives me that three beep, like, girl, I got you, okay? So now this is going to cook my risotto, this is gonna cook my chicken, it's gonna cook all of the things. The only thing I have left to prep is just a little bit of cheese, um, and we are going to be adding the cheese after this is finished cooking because we don't want the cheese uh, to congeal or anything in there. That's kind of like a last minute thing, put it in there um, and let it break down. And the same thing with the broccoli. We don't want that broccoli to overcook and become mush. Um, we want that broccoli to keep that kind of vegetal integrity so that it's, it's not just like a mushy broccoli. I, I don't have time for mushy broccoli. I don't like that kind of stuff. So. This is gonna come up to temperature and start cooking all of the wonderful things that are in there. I'll be right back because we're gonna start grating our own cheese. Stay with me. Okay, friends, we are back. And the last thing we really have to prep is just shredding our cheese. I am going to be using my double grater. Um, you'll see it's kind of like in a little tripod shape. There's two graters here. They can be separated. You just pull them apart. You can do it, you know, tabletop. You can do it right over a bowl. Um, it also comes with a little food catcher that goes right on the bottom of it. So if you're grating it over that, all of the cheese will go or whatever you're grating goes right into the food catcher. Um, I'm just gonna do it on one of my small, um, flexible cutting mats today. Um, the, the one side is a finer grate. The bigger side is what I'm going to be using because I am going to be shredding um, some sharp cheddar, or in this case, I decided to go with extra sharp cheddar because I'm feeling absolutely insane. Now there is a hand protector, as you'll see. Um, all I'm gonna do is put the cheese in there. Oops, I'm doing everything backwards and I can't, I can't see what I'm doing. So you put it in there and then the hand grater has a guide that just pushes the food, whatever it happens to be right now, obviously it's cheese, um, but if you're doing vegetables, if you're doing zucchini, if you're doing cucumber, whatever it happens to be, it just does it super quickly and you'll see these gorgeous, they're like large chunks of cheese. This is perfect if you're doing pizza. It's perfect if you're going to be putting it into, um, you know, something where it needs to melt down, that kind of a thing. Um, the hand guard is best, especially if you're going at it, uh, you know, with smaller blocks of cheese. Um, I'm using, oh, I don't know. I think it called for like 
four ounces of cheese, but you know what? I don't think there's any rules when it comes to cheese. Um, there, I'm just, I live on the edge, especially when it comes to dairy products, okay? So um, my theory and my philosophy is you can never have too much chocolate cheese or bacon. Um, so if you wanna go buck wild with your cheese, absolutely go absolutely crazy. Now, I'm gonna pull this to the side and see, isn't that lovely? Right on my cutting board so I don't have a big mess to clean up. This is ready to go in there. This has come up to pressure. Notice I can touch it, it is not hot. So if you have little ones in the house or you know maybe just some wayward neighbor that stumbles into your house, you should first of all call the police, but number two, if they come here and touch this, it's not gonna burn them. They can't like, you know, sue you or something like that. So this has come up to pressure. I am going to let this finish cooking. Once it, it starts beeping, it's like, Carly, come eat me, right? So once it starts beeping, I will know that it is ready. And the last thing we are going to do after this is done cooking is add our cheeses and our broccoli, stir it up and let that broccoli cook a little bit so that it's not, you know, completely crunchy. And then it'll be dinner time. So stick with me, I'll be right back. Hey, we are back and this just sang me the song of its people telling me that this is done. Um, I didn't mention this before we went into the break here, but do you know how long this actually needed to cook after it came up to pressure? Four minutes? Four. Four. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So this is all cooked, all that good stuff in here. Now, you can probably see, maybe back here, I don't know if you can, but there's a little red button that has popped up because this is pressurized. So I need to release the pressure. Now this is where people start losing their minds. They're like, oh my God, it's gonna blow. No, it's not. Stop, stop Googling stuff, by the way, okay? Because if you Google like your symptoms, you're probably gonna die tomorrow, at least in your own brain. People misuse products all the time, all right? Like old school pressure cookers did not have as many safety features as newer pressure cookers. So please don't be scared to try a pressure cooker. Um, this one, you can't open the lid if it, is, uh, if it is under pressure, number one. Number two, it won't become under pressure if the lid is not on correctly. It's not gonna go blowing off into your ceiling like you see those Pinterest fails where like somebody's got something sticking out of their ceiling and soup all over the you know, counter or something. No, not to mention um, this when we are going to be releasing the steam, the steam releases down here and the steam actually releases up here. So you're not anywhere near where that steam is going to come out. Okay. In fact, I'm going to do it for you right now. It's going to give me a little like heads up warning, like, Hey girl, steam's coming. Okay. So don't have your hand up there or, you know, holding the baby over it or something. So I am going to go ahead and release the steam and then we're going to finish this up. Here comes the steam release. ladies and gents. Now, don't put anything over the steam, you know, don't, don't play, what is it, playing chicken with the train or something where you're like on the tracks and trying to run off the tracks before the train hits you. Don't do stuff like that. Can we talk about that? I mean, with all these little TikTok trends and all this kind of stuff, like don't eat Tide Pods. It, it just seems like that's kind of an obvious thing. Apparently it's not. And like the, what is the, the newer thing that they're doing right now where they're like, trying to jump on crates. They like stack crates to like here to high heaven. Uh, and they try to stack up crates and then jump flat footed onto them. And people are like breaking their everything, um, ending up in the ER and stuff. Can we not do this? I mean, is this, is it, where have we come as a society that we're like, you know what? Um, of course, you know what? I can't really talk because back when I was, um, when I was in high school, they had that show called Jack A, Jack A. Um, and I, I don't even know if those guys, I think they're still alive, but they're probably like, they're, prob <laughs> they're probably uh, in, in a hospital somewhere still. So this is now depressurized. It only takes a minute. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this. It's gonna sing me a song because it loves me and I'm going to jiggle the lid off and look at all that beautiful steam not going on my counter. So, oh my goodness, this looks amazing and it smells absolutely incredible. Now, it is actually a little bit thinner 
than it will be here in a second because we've got some deliciousness to add. Um, the cheeses are going to go in. Um, these are going to naturally thicken that sauce and of course add that richness, that fattiness, um, and that creaminess that, you know, everybody loves cheese, right? Unless you have like a dairy allergy, in which case you probably don't hate cheese. You're just not allowed to have it, right? So I am going to, um, first of all, I'm gonna exit out of my keep warm. It automatically goes to a keep warm setting. So if you get, you know, sidetracked with something else um, in your household, your food's not gonna turn off and get cold. So this will keep it warm, but I'm done with that right now. I'm actually gonna go back to the sear setting. I keep doing this backwards. There we go. I'm gonna go back to the sear setting and start that up. Um, so that uh, if I were to just leave this long enough, the cheese would actually melt on its own, but I'm also cooking my broccoli in this same uh, pan. So I'm going to need a little bit of extra heat uh, especially since this broccoli is going to cool the temperature of that risotto right now because it's cold and it's going in the pan. So I am just going to stir in this broccoli and kind of submerge it into that beautiful sauce. I can't wait to show you guys. The color is absolutely stunning. It, you can see those um, that red bell pepper that we chopped in here is giving it this beautiful kind of like orangey red color. Um, that cheese is melting into it. Um, the broccoli is gorgeous, that green accent. So I cannot wait to show you what this looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and just let this cook um, on the sear setting for about five minutes and then I'll be serving it up. Hang with me, I'll be right back. It's time for dinner and I cannot wait. The last thing I'm gonna do, I just stirred this. Friends, this is, if there's a word for it, it's luxurious. It is, it is absolutely, it's velvety, it's just thick and gooey, gooey, rich. Oh my goodness. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my citrus press, gotta love this thing, especially if you're doing like lemonade or something in the summer, and I'm gonna juice half of a lemon in here. What is that going to do? It's just going to bring that flavor up. It's going to add a little sweetness, a little acidity um, without overpowering it. Um, and then just kind of lightening that flavor. It's not going to taste real lemony, um, but you will get that, that little um, acidic bite to it, um, which just kind of elevates those flavors and it's going to be absolutely delicious. I don't know about you, but like the smell of fresh citrus, it just like I, I could just press citrus all day long. This is done. Um, I cannot wait to show you what this looks like. This looks absolutely gorgeous, and I cannot wait to taste this. I probably should have grabbed more of like a ladle type thing, but you know what? Here's the thing. I am. I don't like doing dishes, so we'll just go with this. Now, um, if you want to make the presentation more lovely, which I didn't plan ahead, so I'm not going to, you could probably do some, sprinkle some cheese on top, so just reserve some of that grated cheese. But look at this thing of beauty. Can you see that? Oh my gosh, all the steam. Do you see the steam? Like I could give myself a facial. But look at that. That broccoli is, it is still that vibrant, green color, you can see flecks of that red pepper, um, those juicy chunks of chicken, of course that really luxurious creamy risotto that is in there. Um, it's not too thick, it's not too thin. I cannot wait to tuck into this. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you coming and hanging out with me in my kitchen. Um, I hope you like this recipe. I hope your family devours this recipe. Don't forget to give me a like and subscribe, share with your friends, and I'll see you next time. Bye.